Welcome to Soapbox Radio, everyone, and thank you for joining in today. This is Carmen Leanna here, and uh, we have a very special show set up for you today. Um, as uh, most of our listeners know, Soapbox Radio provides a platform for people with disabilities and their families and those who advocate for them. So today um, we have uh, quite a few people in the studio with us. We have um, Hazel Lorraine. Hello. My other half, my co-host. I'm very excited to be here. Yes, indeed. And then we also have Kent Loftsgaard, who was on our show. He was a prior guest, and he's with Wheelin Mobility, and Kent has a history in broadcasting, media, and communications. Welcome to the show again, Kent. Thank you so much. And then our star of the show today <laughs> is Marco Pasqua. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little bit of an introduction here before we get into conversing with Marco. So stay tuned. Marco Giovanni Pasqua was born on July 4th, 1985 in Vancouver, British Columbia. That date would eventually mean more to his family than ever expected as it was the beginning of his fight for a normal life. He only weighed 2 pounds 10 ounces at birth and was 3 months premature. His parents would later find out that he was also born with cerebral palsy, spastic diplegia. Despite facing adversity and having to endure more than 13 surgeries as a child, Marco's parents raised him to believe that no goal was too out of reach and no challenge was too hard to conquer. All the while, Marco was determined to prove that he had been listening to their encouraging words. He excelled at sports quite quickly, which allowed him the great opportunity to compete in the BC Summer and Winter Games for athletes with disability. Since 1994, he has won 22 gold, 10 silver, and 2 bronze medals in track and field, swimming, horseback riding, and basketball. When Marco is 10 years old, he got his first opportunity to speak in front of a large audience. When he was chosen to be the ambassador, host, alongside TV and radio personality Red Robinson for the Timmy's Christmas Telethon. It was then that Marco realized the impact that words can have. With the drive and positive attitude that he gained from those experiences and leading an active lifestyle, Marco was led to the Art Institute of Vancouver to study for an associate's degree in fine arts and game design. In March 2006, he graduated from this program on the Dean's List with honors. And when I first was told that there was a camp out there that I'd actually be able to enjoy, I didn't believe it. Because every single outdoor event or camping experience I had experienced up to that point was very restrictive because of my disability. And then I was shown the Easter Seals, Camp Squamish, and my whole life changed. For the first time ever, I was able to go outside and enjoy those outside experiences and not be restricted by my wheelchair because they had adaptive equipment. And they had more than that people with the right kind of attitude and mindset that were willing to never say that it wasn't possible and to get out there and just to try it and with that support it's helped me to become the person that I am today. Marco always knew he was destined for something greater where he could give back to the many non-profit organizations and countless others in all walks of life. He left his current role in the gaming world to pursue his true passion of being a professional speaker. In February 2011, Marco came across the Able Gamers Foundation, a website and organization that's main goal was to raise awareness about the need for accessibility in games and provide practical support to hardware and software development so that all users no matter what their ability, can play. This played right into Marco's experiences, and in under six months' time, not only did he become a staff writer for the Foundation, but has been made the main point of contact out of the West Coast to attend conferences like the Penny Arcade Exchange and the Electronic Entertainment Expo to speak on the topics of accessibility in gaming. With advice he's received from icons like Red Robinson and Gene Simmons, nothing is going to stop him in pursuit of this dream. He is motivated in life because he has seen firsthand the power that a positive outlook can have on changing others' perceptions. Marco may not be as physically able as some individuals, but he's been given a voice and he plans to use it. He utilizes his stories of struggle and success to provide practical tools that will create action immediately to light a fire in employees and students everywhere and level up their life. For more information on Marco's company and how he can speak at your next event, he can be reached at www.thecubeprinciple.com. 
Welcome to our show, Marco. It is such an honor to have you today. And I just want to let our listeners know that we have Kent Lofsgaard here as our host, and he is going to be very graciously interviewing Marco. So welcome, both of you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, sorry, uh, that's quite the long intro, but uh, now you guys have the backstory of me, so that's great. We basically covered the full uh, first segment there. No, well, I'm sure we can expand on a couple of things. Absolutely. Perfect. And I'm just so thrilled to be back, and I thank Carmen on air for her gracious invitation to return as a special guest co-host. Since I was here last year, I've had a few opportunities to feature some of my favorite people on the air. I think first was Neil Matheson, and then we had Luke Galvani, and today that trend continues with Marco. Awesome. Now, I'm sure that we could regale you with the full hour of sentimental reminiscences since Marco and I have known each other for close to 20 years now. 18 years. years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Ever since 1994, back when I first met Marco, when he was serving as the all too precocious fundraising spokesperson for the Timmy's Christmas Telethon. That's right, as you just heard in the promo there. That's right. Yeah. But that's not what he's here to talk about today so much <laughs> as his present day purposes and the causes that are closest to his heart and top on that list at the moment is Reality Controls. That's right. Reality Controls is a Vancouver-based software development company. And how I actually came across them was with my work with the Able Gamers Foundation, like you heard in the promo there. Uh, You know, I actually, they started following me on Twitter. And I had never heard of this company before, but uh, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go to their website because that goes to show you how powerful social media can be. I go to their website and see that they're actually developing software that I perceive could be used to help people with disabilities improve their quality of life. So I pitched an idea to them that I would actually go to their headquarters and uh, and do sort of review of this software. Well, what turned into what I thought was going to be a simple review of this software turned into so much more because uh, they ended up asking me to come on as their technology consultant on how they can really expand on what this software can do and how it's going to help to change people's lives. So I'm extremely excited to be part of this opportunity. And in your work with them, you've been playing a role in helping to recruit some software testers from out of the disability community Mm -hmm. to give their feedback on how the work of reality controls might be improved and sort of tweaked to be able to serve the greatest number of people. And recently, I was blessed to be one of those people to go in and have a first-hand look at exactly what they're working on. And why don't you tell us a little bit about just exactly the technical side of what the control mapper software is. Awesome. So, yeah, that's one of the pieces of uh, software that Reality Controls is currently working on. It's called Control Mapper. And basically, in layman's terms, what it is is it uses the Xbox 360's Connect connected to a PC so that you can actually use motion gestures and voice control to control any application through Windows. So this is something as simple as if you're using PowerPoint and you want a swiping motion to go through to your next slide or even the word next, you can say next and you don't even have to have um, great motor skills, you can go to that next slide. But where you were probably demoing the software was in a 3D game environment. And uh, so we were using a piece of software called Guild Wars 2 and that's where I actually got really excited about this I have a background in the game industry and I'm sitting there interviewing them and they're showing me the ability of being able to control a character in a 3d environment simply by using slight movements in my arms and legs to control virtual triggers around me <laughs> I know that that sounded like I said layman's terms, but I don't know if does that make sense to you, Ken? <laughs> it, well, it makes sense to me because I've seen it. Right. And I think that it's certainly a very innovative application that you've kind of gotten their creative juices flowing over at Reality Controls about the way that this can benefit gamers and computer users with disabilities because it's not just for your gaming experience. This is a way to fully control your desktop, isn't it? That's right. It's, it doesn't have to be about games. I mean, simply from 
going and checking your calendar on a day-to-day -day basis to checking your email, you can use this software in combination with any application that you currently use to enhance your existing abilities. And really that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to increase the quality of life for users everywhere, not just with disabilities, but individuals who want to stay in a seated position or maybe don't have the greatest motor function. This gives you that power. And that's why I'm so pumped up about it because it's very rare that I come across a piece of software that's actually going to help change people's lives. So with Control Mapper being the introductory piece of software that we're currently showcasing, this is the perfect catalyst to do so. And before you had turned reality controls onto the potential of their software yep. for users with disabilities, what had they originally intended that it would do? Like, what was their target market then? Well, they're looking at it from a business standpoint, you know, for business applications. There are some companies out there uh, in the fitness and rehabilitation market. Now, uh, fitness, perhaps uh, even companies like Lululemon, where if you walk into a facilities and you wanted a quick fitness assessment of your stance or your posture, this is something that that software could do at its base core value. But we still do offer that kind of software to other individuals. I think that that's just the starting gate as to what they were thinking about initially. Tell us a little bit about the founder of Reality Controls, because this awesome. is a small fledgling operation at the moment, but it has a lot of promise and potential for the future. 100%. Yeah, uh, the founder is Sean Sibbett, and uh, he's a, uh, you know, he lives here in Vancouver, and he's just very passionate about making a difference for people. So when he came across me and he realized the therapeutic benefits that could actually help people, he knew that that was the road and the avenue that he wanted to go down. So Sean and I have been working together since uh, just before the end of last year and uh, we've really helped to develop each other's knowledge whereas he didn't have a lot of past knowledge or experience of working with persons with disability and now that I've been able to join his team as a technology consultant bringing my experience from the game industry and also a person with a disability it's kind of like a match made in heaven what would you say is the greatest weakness that exists in the system in the evolution of this software like sure well like anything you know uh, having a background in quality assurance making sure the software is at its peak potential I think that where they could use to grow and uh, we are working on this is that right now using the Microsoft Connect that really focuses on macro motion but what we're going to be doing with uh, pieces of hardware like the Leap Motion and the Intel Soft Kinetic is that's where they focus on micro motion and what that basically means is that it's actually going to be able to pick up on things like the movement of your eyes and even smaller motions so that individuals with more severe motor impairments could also become involved could also use this software to benefit them and from there really the sky's the limit. For those that are interested in finding out more about Reality Controls or the Control Mapper software, how do they do that? Well, I'm actually going to direct them to our Indiegogo campaign because that's really where we're trying to raise money to make this software better. Currently, we are trying to raise $30,000 through Indiegogo. Uh, so if people are interested in finding out more or even donating, they can go to www.indiegogo.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O.com slash control mapper. So they can go there or you can visit realitycontrols.com and you can find more out about the company. Now, if my watch is correct, that makes it about time for our station ID, and then we'll come back and you can tell us a little bit more about a very special event where you'll be featured with Reality Controls. Looking forward to it. And this is Vancouver Co-op Radio on 100.5 FM CFRO. You're listening to Soapbox Radio, a program on Vancouver Co-op Radio that provides a platform for people with disabilities and their families and people who advocate for them. And uh, let's get right back here to Kent and Marco. Excellent. I was expecting a music break there, but we didn't even have that today. So right back to our conversation with Marco <laughs> and an opportunity for you to tell us about the very special event that's happening on March 16th. That's right. So on March 16th, uh, if uh, the locals out there that are listening, you might have heard some buzzes about uh, TEDx Stanley Park. Well, Sean and I are fortunate enough to be some of the selected speakers to go on stage and speak at TEDx about the software that we're currently helping to develop and creating for the disabled community. So we're really looking forward to that. And I can't wait. It's just under a month away. Some in our audience may be familiar with the TED brand, That's right. but uh, there are some important differences for people to understand between TED and TEDx. Yeah. 
So TED.com, uh, for anyone who's a speaker out there, definitely knows about these videos or even anyone who loves to just be inspired by uh, the world's experts. And uh, TED does lend its brand to the TEDx Forum. And basically what that is, TEDx events are independently organized events with the TED brand. So what that means, it's a smaller version of the TED conferences that's perhaps a little bit more affordable for some people, but it's usually community-based and usually has people who are speaking that are from the area at which which uh, the event is being held. So we're just very, very pumped about this, especially from the fact that in any TED event, it's not about focusing on what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to do. It's how you're educating the public and how you're planning to change lives. And I really think that that is an avenue and a forum that we can excel in. Now, do you know what kind of other presentations people can expect to see during the TEDx conference? Oh, sure. Uh, there is a gentleman by the name of Joe Roberts. He's doing a thing called Push for Change, uh, where he's pushing a shopping cart around Canada as a way to show where his life used to be, as well as a couple of people talking about stem cell research and quantum physics, I believe is one of them. So I'm really excited, if nothing more, to uh, to mingle with the other speakers as well, because it's going to be a power-packed afternoon, and people can really look forward to enjoying themselves. It sounds like it's a valuable networking opportunity for you and a real opportunity to hear from a cross-section of thought leaders. That's right. I mean, the thing is, is that I realize no one is an expert at everything. So it's always great to kind of get yourself involved with other people who might have different perspectives on life, different things that you can really gain from. And for me as a speaker, I'm always learning and excelling and growing by the knowledge of other people. So if I want to better myself in this industry, what better way than to surround myself with like-minded individuals? Now, from what you told me before we went on the air, yep. apparently the in-person attendance for this is fairly limited. Will it be webcast as well? Uh, that's correct. So uh, I believe that there is going to be a webcast, uh, but right now I think that there are still tickets available. So if you go to TEDxStanleyPark.com, you can go and you can buy tickets. I believe it's $97 for a ticket, but that gives you a seat in-house. There's going to be some surprise things going on, so I'm not able to release too much information. But what I can say is that it is going to be great for anyone that likes to learn something new and wants to know what we're doing throughout the city and throughout the country, for that matter. Excellent. Now, even though it's called TEDx Stanley Park, it's <laughs> not taking place anywhere near Stanley Park. And that's due to some very strange branding limitations to which the TEDx conferences are subject. Maybe you can tell us a little more about that. Yeah, so I don't know the finer details, but essentially what it comes down to is a TEDx event is not allowed to repeat the same name as it has before if it is in a similar region. So we have had TEDx Capilano, we have had TEDx SFU, and so our options for this event, from what I understand, was either TEDx English Bay or TEDx Stanley Park. Now, I don't know what the reasoning behind the committee's choice for Stanley Park was, but I love Stanley Park. It's a beautiful place. It's a great place to go, and definitely people who know the city understand what Stanley Park is. So, I'm very happy to do it. We're actually taking place in Robson Square, UBC's location in Robson Square. So, that's actually where it's happening. But yeah, we're lending ourselves the name Stanley Park. Right. Not to be confused with anything that might have been called a TEDx Robson Square, because that name was not available to you. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds like an amazing thing to look forward to. But leading up to your involvement with the TEDx conference, you had some advocates there that were able to arrange that opportunity for you. Yes, so uh, there's a gentleman in the city by the name of Roger Killen who runs the Vancouver Business Network. He's an amazing guy, and he was commissioned uh, to run this event and to start this event. And he's really emotional about this because he really is into encouraging entrepreneurship across Canada. And for me, that was a big step because I went from working at a pretty major game company in the city to then starting my own business as of January of last year. And so I know the trials and tribulations that it takes to start your own company and to be involved in a business and guys like Roger are just there as a wonderful support system to say that don't give up on your dreams it's gonna happen you just have to have the strength and the fortitude to pull yourself through and that matches nicely with a lot of the principles and practices that you talk about in your work more broadly 
through the Cube Principle and through your own company, Marco Pasqua Enterprises. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that cool thing about why I do what I do is they say that anyone can be an entrepreneur if they're following their passion, if they're following that thing that they were born to do. And I really do believe that I was he brought here on this earth to help change people's lives and to help shape their perspectives on themselves and the challenges that they're going through. So what the Cube Principle is, it's a three-part system that helps people creatively utilize their best energy. Essentially what it is, is it's helping you to recognize a challenge, assess what is needed to overcome it, and then how to put the energy in. Because uh, I'm sure you've heard all those things that if you put your mind to it, you can do anything and don't stop believing. <laughs> not to quote cool journey, but you know, those are fantastic things, but they don't really mean anything. So I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm not trying to say that I'm creating some brand new, fantastic system. I just want to share my perspectives on life, the things that I've gained, the things that I've understood growing up with a disability. And perhaps maybe then I can show that not everyone can relate to having a disability, but everybody can relate to going through challenges. And that was really the goal behind starting the business and starting the company. Indeed. And so what are some of the goals that you have beyond Reality Controls? Because Reality Controls is a company that you're working with, but not for them. So where do you see yourself going with the Cube Principle and with Marco Pasqua Enterprises? Well, I want to be able to show companies out there that, you know, Every individual that works within the company is an important key element of that company. Everyone brings something special. And so really, it's about recognizing that you can utilize those people for their individual skill sets. I know that working for a large company, sometimes you feel like the things that you do doesn't get noticed. You don't get recognized for the things that you do. But everyone does have individual strengths that really help to strengthen a company's core. And so it's about putting those individuals in the right position to best utilize their ability. And so I want to help uh, start a mentorship program for other speakers. I want to help companies and individuals have one-on-one -on -one mentoring if that's what they need. But essentially, I just want to show people that, yeah, it must be a tough time and we hear things like recession in the media and all these terrible things. But you know what? We've got air in our lungs and we've got some zest in our step. And that's all you really need to push forward in life. It's really just about reshaping that perspective and reminding yourself about what really matters. Now, you have called yourself a motivational speaker speaker, which I don't really think that that's the best fit for yeah. you. And you and I have had conversations about that <laughs> because motivational speakers come a dime a dozen. But I think you've succeeded in setting yourself apart from the pack by the way that you have integrated these gaming industry personal improvement principles. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, a lot of the experiences that I speak about in my speaking topics has to do with the things that I learned within the game industry, dealing with tight deadlines, dealing with multi-million and billion dollar contracts. And that in turn can create a lot of stress, can create a lot of contention among other employees. And uh, you really don't want that to have happen. So I wanted to set myself apart. I didn't want to be known as another speaker with a disability. I mean, granted, that's fantastic that the people are out there doing that and sharing their story. But I really wanted to add something tangible that other people could use throughout their own lives because I think that that's really important. And so setting myself apart is what I want to do is I want to inspire people to be motivated. So maybe the better term is inspirational speaker because really what it comes down to is I want to inspire people to find their own motivation, whatever that means to them. And for everyone going through different walks of life, as you know, that mm -hmm. means different things to different people. So uh, starting the company last year in January and building its way through, I see big things in the future. And if I keep uh, aligning myself with wonderful companies, like reality controls and organizations like the Able Gamers Foundation based out of the U.S., I think that there's nothing that's going to stop me. And tell us a little bit more about the good work of the Able Gamers Foundation. Well, Able Gamers is first and foremost a foundation um, among anything else. Uh, they really want to help get equipment and software out there that's going to better the lives of persons with disability. So how I came across them is I was looking for a website that was doing specific game reviews and software reviews for persons with disability. And to much to my I just made there was no company except for able gamers so here I am this uh, Canadian with uh, you know some guts in me and uh, I decided to approach this US company and say I would be interested in writing for you guys and uh, what I thought they were just gonna brush me off actually ended up being something fantastic because now I've been a staff writer and the main point of contact out of the West Coast for over two years now and I've been able as you heard in the promo in the beginning been able to go to wonderful things like the electronic entertainment expo uh, the PAX expo which is just gaming expo 
expos and really help raise awareness about persons with disability using software and gaming to better their lives. There's over 33 million gamers across the US alone that use gaming for rehabilitation purposes. And so any company that's out there, any game company that says it's just not worth it for us to look into accessibility, I would have to disagree because at the end of the day, that's 33 million people that you could actually be helping and gaining a profit from as well. So from a business standpoint, it really just makes sense. Hasn't that been a pervasive problem in marketing in general that a lot of consumer agencies and a lot of businesses don't think of people with disabilities as a legitimate market segment? That's right. I mean, there is that stigma that a lot of individuals who have disabilities, that must mean that they have low income. Now, even though this may be the case for some people, you've got individuals like you and I who do uh, run our own businesses and are upstanding individuals and are giving back to society. It would be just so easy for me to say that, well, you know what? I was born with a disability, so I might as well just have disability and eat off the system, as it were. But I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to really show that it is within you to do what it is that you want to do and we want to break that stigma so hopefully individuals like myself and you can start to break that stigma to say listen there's real business here and there's real things you can have done so and that stigma breaking continues thanks to media outlets like soapbox radio where it's time again for our station id thank you kent we're going to go to a quick music break here and we will be back with more soapbox radio so please stay tuned Welcome back to Soapbox Radio. I'm Carmen Liana on Vancouver Co-op Radio, CFRO 100.5 FM. And I'm joined here today by our special co-host, Kent Loftsgaard, who is introducing our very special guest, Marco Pasqua. So I'm going to hand the mic back on over to you, Kent. Well, thank you so much, Carmen. And now, Marco, before the break, you were telling us about the good work of Reality Controls and everything that's coming up with the TEDx conference, you know, and we've touched on a lot of that stuff. We talked about able gamers, but that only scratches the surface of the whole person that you are, because in addition to all of that, you're also something of a power fundraiser. For years now, for as long as you've known me, uh, since uh, about the age of 10, I have really been giving back to a lot of nonprofits, um, you know, lending my story uh, and also just sharing with people. And one of those organizations is Easter Seals and Lion Society, who I hold near and dear to my heart. Uh, they're like a second family to me, and there's nothing that I wouldn't do for those people as they do share in the values and ethics that I believe in. And that's basically providing any programs or events that are going to help to better the life of persons with disability uh, around the lower mainland. And starting back in 1994 when you were the featured spokes kid yes. on the <laughs> then live and direct from Queen Elizabeth Theatre version of the Timmy's Christmas Telethon, that was your first opportunity to connect with someone who would become influential in your life and someone who's certainly been influential in mine, our local legendary broadcaster Mr. Red Robinson. Yeah, you know, Red has become uh, quite a close friend of mine. You know, I just think he's a wonderful guy. He's about giving back. He's about sharing his experiences and, and really helping to better the lives of people as well. So it seems like we have a common theme here because I keep surrounding myself with people that are just great with huge hearts. And Red is one of those people. He has helped to motivate me to become, in part, the person that I am today. And that was me sharing the stage with him as a 10-year-old boy, looking out into the audience for the first time in my life and seeing that man you can be saying things you can be using your words for good and it really does make a difference when i saw the people's eyes in the audience lighting up and seeing that anything is possible and and the programs that easter seals was providing i knew that this is a potential industry that i'd want to get involved in i just didn't know to what capacity until of course last year when i started my company and, uh, and then my vision was realized and with the Timmy's Christmas Telethon, they've shortened down the original 21-hour version and <laughs> brought it back a couple of years ago, at which time you started your service as a special guest co-host on the Telethon. Yeah, that was uh, that would actually have been 2011, uh, the 2011 show. I'm right. already thinking, geez, it's 2013 already. That's uh, it. The first year back was 2011, and I was the social media host alongside Bianca Solterbeck. And uh, that was really neat because with social media being so big now with Twitter, Facebook, all of those things, how cool was it that uh, you can see this Timmy's kid years later uh, looking not so much like a kid anymore, although I do have that young face people keep telling me about. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, 
it was it was a fantastic experience into which it led into last year's telethon where they asked me to come back as actually a guest host representing Easter Seals alongside my friends Michael Eckford, Fiona Forbes, and a couple of guest hosts like Chris Galis, who helped ring in something even more special for me as well. <laughs> mm hmm And that fits nicely with what I was gonna say next because I was gonna say that the telethon has given you an opportunity to connect with some of our colleagues in community television at Shaw and now you've had a fundraising effort going with them uh, last year and we're hoping again this year it's going to be bigger and better that's the Easter Seals drop zone Yes, Easter Seals Drop Zone. That last year was the first year I did it, and let me tell you, I was frightened. So to give a little backstory of what that is for people out there, it's a 20-story uh, rappel off the side of an office building. Now, I could have just done this outside of my wheelchair because I am able to function and move outside of my chair, but I really wanted that extra visual element that was going to wow people. So I actually did it in my wheelchair, 20 stories down, rappelling down the side of a building, uh, much to my girlfriend's dismay, who almost got sick at the top of the building, Building, and I did make it in one piece and myself Fiona Forbes, Michael Egford, uh, Lucas Mattiello, and Matt Astafan was our team inspirational. We raised over $5,000 for Easter Seals Kids with an ambitious goal this year of $20,000. So let's hope that we do it. <laughs> and that was the throwing down of the financial gauntlet that happened live on the air during the telethon. Mm -hmm. When you put that uh, challenge out to, uh, how did it go? You put the challenge out to Fiona or she put the challenge out to you? Well, if anyone who has seen the drops on what it is that we were doing, Fiona actually went down in a chicken suit because she was so chicken to do the actual drop that she wanted to make fun of herself. After we finished, she said that she would never do that again, but she surprised me so much because live on the air of the telethon last year, she went out and said, Marco, do you want to do it again? And I said, of course I do, but you don't. And she said, well, you know what? I will do it again, but only if we can raise $20,000. And she even roped in Mr. Chris Galis as a part of our team. So there's going to be a couple of uh, other individuals who are joining our team uh, this coming year to make it even extra special. With Fiona and Michael Eckford, you have been featured on an episode or two of The Rush already, and you have another one coming up, but now Fiona, for the moment anyway, is flying solo. She is flying solo. Um, so uh, essentially it is going to be just Fiona, I believe. They may have a guest host who works for Shaw on with her. And uh, I'm going to be talking more about reality controls, showing some video of what it is that we're doing there. And I'm really excited about that because Shaw has become so important to me in my life. And again, like another second family, especially since they were there for a very special moment for me this year when I proposed live to my girlfriend on the telethon as a part of an interview with Mr. Galis. And so how many guys can say that they have uh, a handsome gentleman like that being part of something that can be then broadcasted to the rest of Canada to see? So I was really excited and I was just really glad that if all the presentations I've done in the world, that was the one that was the most nerve wracking that I've ever gone through. Not because I was afraid of the answer, but because it's just a strange situation to put yourself in. So thank you to the Shaw family out there. And that was certainly the most memorable moment in the six-hour telethon, was your on-air proposal to Karen. And anybody who wants to see that can see a video of that online. Tell people where they can find that. So even if you just go to Google or your favorite search engine and type in Marco Pasqua, P-A-S-Q-U-A, -A, proposal, that'll come up. You can also go to my website, which is www.thecubeprincipal.com. I think we should start a campaign for you to be the next co-host of The Rush. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say no to that as an opportunity. As I said, uh, you know, all the people who are there at the telethon are, uh, sorry, at Shaw and, and involved in the telethon have become so close to me. And so the fact that they're just so willing to share my story, to get out there, and to really give back to the community speaks numbers in terms of what they really believe in as a station and as the people working within that organization. So I've just been really blessed uh, to be involved and uh, I would love to help co-host or, or do other things in the future with them because well it just makes sense. <laughs> I think you should pitch that on the air when you see them next and tell people when they can see you. So I'm going to be on February 28th, uh, so that's only uh, basically uh, eight days away, and uh, that's Shaw Cable 4, and it's at 10 p.m. They went from a uh, community show 
to actually a national show across Canada now. And they're doing kind of like a Jimmy Kimmel style thing where it's technology, entertainment, that sort of thing. And that's on at 10 p.m. Uh, if you're going to be watching it live. It's 10 p.m. They also do a live stream, uh, which is uh, all this behind the scenes footage and different things like this. So uh, there's a bunch of things you can check out. Check out the rush, check out the proposal, check out me worrying that I was going to get sick on my girlfriend on yeah. live TV. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, which is a blessing. Uh, they say I looked as cool as the polar bear's toenails, but I tell you, I don't know if I felt that way. <laughs> well, we have all kinds of exciting things to look forward to in the career of Marco Pasqua going forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, I want to thank you uh, personally on air for helping to uh, create some of these opportunities for me. You know, I respect you and your background and everything that you've done for me in my life. So I just want to thank you for, for being involved and, and really giving back to me in this way uh, because I was able to meet some wonderful individuals throughout the years, including these two ladies here in the studio um, who I believe are, are doing wonderful things uh, for community radio, co-op radio. And, uh, and let's keep this thing going. Let's, let's just keep it growing. Absolutely. And talking about wonderful things happening in community radio, if I understand correctly, Soapbox has just recently gone from a bi-weekly show to a weekly show. Yeah, please tell us more. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Well, it's still in the works. So, um, you know, it was announced on Facebook. There's still some things to work out and some kinks to take care of. Um, not quite sure when exactly it's going to take place, but uh, we're very excited about when it does. Okay, so next show is not necessarily immediately scheduled for next week That's now. correct. That's okay. correct. So um, they're, they're, the station's just working out when, uh, the, when it's all going to take place, and we will let all the listeners know when that happens. Excellent. And on that note, isn't it time for another one of those station IDs? Yes, it is. And I think we're going to take another music break here. And I just want to let everybody know that the music I'm playing is a Canadian artist. It's a band called August Gale. They are a Canadian uh, folk band. So we're going to go to another quick song and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Soapbox Radio. I'm Carmen Leanna, and you're listening to Vancouver Co-op Radio 100.5 FM. And uh, back here now with us is Kent Lofsgaard and our wonderful guest, Marco Pasqua. So I'm going to hand the mic back on over to you here, Kent. And we're already down to the last segment of the show, and I thought we might use this time to give Marco an opportunity to discuss what he thinks are the most pressing issues facing the disability community today. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that the number one pressing issue, which kind of combines itself with a number of different issues, is really the perspective that people have on persons with disability. We touched briefly on that a little earlier about how yes, the, the perception of individuals, but I think that that is actually something that is really playing a part on what people think that individuals with disabilities can contribute to society. So I think that what we really need to do is show people that even though somebody might have a disability, it doesn't mean that they can't contribute in many different different ways throughout the community and throughout basically the rest of the world. Uh, we live in a wonderful time where there are a ton of opportunities that even you can attest to the fact that even 20 years ago the same opportunities didn't exist but uh, thankfully we live in the best city in the world uh, in Vancouver here and uh, in greater Vancouver region and there's a lot of accessibility here there's a lot of push for positive change and so I think that we might not necessarily face as many as some of the more rural areas throughout Canada and the rest of the world but it is still a problem so so I want to really just shine a light on and show people that there is so many things that can be done as long as you're willing to change your perspective. Right. Whether that's thinking about people with disabilities as legitimate consumers or as legitimate professionals or as legitimately educated people, part of what you're doing is trying to, and there's been a team of us that have been working on this for a <laughs> while now, but you're one of us that is trying to reinforce the notion that people with disabilities can be the helpers and not just the helped. That's right. Uh, I mean, it comes down to everything that you gain in life, you learn in life, is through your own personal experiences. So what's to say that a person with cerebral palsy um, doesn't have the ability to then help out somebody else just because they have a disability doesn't mean that they have to be restricted. So like you just said, we can also help, we can also make that major difference. And I'm just excited to be a part of that movement, if you, as it were. Are we experiencing technical difficulties? Are we okay? Yeah, yeah. no. Unfortunately, uh, us here in the studio, when we're online, we have to be letting people in the front doors at the same time we're okay. running the show. So I okay. apologize for all the beeping in the background. That's okay. 
Just so we know there's no major emergencies going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were getting ready to call the Ghostbusters because a uh, blue light came on That's and I was it. ready to pull up my gun. Yeah, that, <laughs> and there's a sign in the studio here that says, if the blue light flashes, you must answer the phone. Yeah. Uh, which sort of reminds me of another improbable sign that I think has since been removed. But for years, there was a sign before you went over the, I think it was the Patella Bridge, that said, no stopping on bridge under any circumstances. <laughs> mm. Which always seemed really, really ridiculous to me, because if the car doesn't go, there will be stopping on the bridge under those circumstances. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But just before we close the show here, yeah. Marco, uh, remind people all the different ways that they can get in touch with you. And also, I think it's important, again, to mention that Reality Controls is still inviting consumers to come and test their software in the continuing effort to refine its performance. And that software, as it is now, is even now available for sale. That's right. So you can go to controlmapper.com and you can purchase the software for $39.95. That's extremely inexpensive in terms of accessible software. And that buys you your license for the first year, followed by a $10 subscription for subsequent years. Uh, if they want to contact me, you can reach me on Twitter at Marco underscore Pasqua. That's M-A-R-C-O-P-A-S-Q-U-A. -S as well as you can go to my website, www.thecubeprincipal.com and find out more. I'm always open to hearing people's suggestions. I'm always open to hearing people's feedback. And uh, just how wonderful has this been for basically the past hour for us to promote all these wonderful things going on within the community. So, And let's tell people one more time, what is the date of the TEDx conference and your appearance on the Rush and all of those sales points that we want to make? Awesome. So TEDx conference, TEDx Stanley Park, will be taking place at UBC Robson Square location on March 16th, 2013. And that's at I believe 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. So it's a packed day. So if they want to find out more information about TEDx, they can go to www.tedxstanleypark.com and find out more about getting tickets or just wanting to see what the other speakers are all about. And how many speakers are there? Is that uh, a bunch of short segments or is it some short and uh, some long? Or? I believe we're up to... 12 of us now, but that includes Sean and I being a tag team. So it's a very small, intimate group, but a lot of power-packed information in that short period of time. We're down to the final two minutes, so I just want to take an opportunity to thank you, Marco, for joining us. It's, it's been a pleasure to be here to interview you and to give you an opportunity to use this forum to talk about all of the good stuff that you're doing. When you came to me and said, hey, give me some ways that I can put the word out there for reality controls, I mean, what they're doing here at Soapbox Radio seemed like a natural fit. It is. Wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much to you both. We really appreciate you coming on down here to Vancouver Co-op Radio. We had a lot of fun, full of laughter, inspiration, and I feel motivated. How about you, Hazel? I just want to get out there and just, you know, take the world on. <laughs> right on. <laughs> well, hopefully we can have you back again sometime. So thanks again, and thank you to our listeners for listening to Soapbox Radio. Please stay tuned to Wednesdays from today, and we'll be back with more wonderful guests. Have a wonderful day, everybody. On the 25th of August